Hi, I'm Marie Eldridge. I'm an educator for Handy Quilter, and we are in the American Patchwork and Quilting Crafts Lab. I want to talk about quilting and your continuous path. It's kind of like going on a trip. You get so excited to go, and then you have all those starts and stops that slow you down. It's the same sort of thing when you're quilting. When I get on the quilt, I just want to quilt. And besides that, all those starts and stops, those are hide, hard to hide. So you want to find the path that you can travel on your quilt that's continuous so you have the least amount of starts and stops. So I'm going to just use a ruler and travel along here and that's what I did on this green quilt here. Just echo that chevron. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in just a ruler. I just want to measure this. So I'm going to come down from the point of this and just mark it with a ruler. So we'll mark one inch, two inch, and three inch. So if I come across over to here, back to here, I'm back to where I started. So the third one will keep me here and then I can travel. So as you're doing this, you're also setting up the density of your quilt because that's how far I'm saying I'm going to have my lines be apart from each other. I'm going to use this ruler. This is the skinny ruler. I really like how this fits in my hand, plus it has lots of guidelines on it, so I can use those to help me set up. I have a ruler base on so that I have that security, and I'm only going to sew where I have control of my ruler. The other thing I have is the sure foot on here, which has a little higher profile, and it keeps that ruler for coming up over the hopping foot. Now I want to stitch to this dot. I'm going to make those a little more prominent so you can see where they are. And this is just an airy race marker that will go away. So since I want to stitch to here, I have to allow room for my hopping foot. That's where I want to stitch to, but I'm going to put my ruler there. Okay, so Sometimes you have to kind of be a contortionist. I have my ruler lined up about a quarter inch from that dot, and I'm just going to start going that direction. Now, sometimes you can stop and move the ruler. Sometimes you can just walk your hand up there, but I want to have really good control on this. So I'm just, I kind of slow down just as I get to where I want to end kind of like a trip, right? All right, so now I have my ruler a quarter inch away from where I want to end because I want to end right at that where the fabric seams meet. And you can see I just kind of slow down as I get close to where I want to end. All right, this time we're gonna come back towards me and I've got my quarter inch gap there. Just slow down as you get to where you're going. Okay, and again, I have my, I know that's where I want to be, but I have to set my uh, ruler so that I have that quarter inch. Now, if I do one more, I'm here and I'm ready to travel to the next design. So the next chevron. Sometimes you'll hear that little sound. Sometimes your ruler, you're pressing a little bit too hard. You want your ruler to be a guide so that it keeps you there, but you don't have to press really hard. So I'm pressing down against my ruler base. I'm pressing the ruler against the hopping foot, and I'm also kind of putting pressure on my handlebar so that it's against that ruler. So I can just travel like this and move to the next chevron. All right, I have all of this space unquilted, so I have some design decisions to make. I can also just do some more chevrons inside of there. But I think what I'll do is make one chevron back and then add a design to it just to break it up. But you don't have to. Remember, you're deciding on that travel path and you're the quilter. So let's just come down just to see what the difference looks like. Let's just come down 
How about an inch and a half? Let's do that. So we're going to leave a bigger gap this time. And all of your gaps can be different sizes. That just adds interest. So I'm setting up my ruler. I've lifted my handlebar a little bit just so you can see better. And back to this side. And now I'm just going to do a little bit of ribbon candy. So I have a real tiny spot in there to start out with. So when I'm doing these, I kind of talk to myself and say down. So down, up and around, down, up and around, down, up and around, down, up and around. Kind of helps you to learn the path. Once you get that down, you don't have to talk to yourself all the time. Sometimes you can just draw little dots so that you know that you're going to go around those little dots inside each of those little loops. You find all kinds of things to help you with your quilting. Oh look, one of them is not to talk to your friends while you're quilting. <laughs> okay, and we'll say that's done. So if you plan your quilt and have a continuous travel path, that will save you time.